All right, hey, what's going on? Uh, this is going to be Awesome Game Replays, episode 41, covering a uh, bit of a Taito game here in Alpine Ski, some overhead uh, skiing action from 1981, the arcades, and we'll be looking at a uh, six loop, one credit clear run uh, with some uh, strategy and mechanics and such commentary being provided by our player of the replay as well as our guest of the episode and our guest is Siamage so welcome to the show thank y'all for having me yes yeah, so I was just asking you right before we went live here but like what's your story with uh, Alpine Ski and what brings you to uh, bringing us this replay today so I first discovered Alpine Ski on Title Legends 2 many years ago I only played it maybe once or twice back then, but not too long ago, I went back to it in MAME, and man, it was a lot more fun than I remembered. So I started by getting my one all. It didn't take me too long, but then I started getting a two all. Then it was a three all, and before you know it, I ended up with a five all, and six all, and then I got my recent high score. Okay. I just kept pushing score further and further. So what are the fundamentals of uh, Alpine Ski? Like, what's the, what are you trying to do exactly? So the point of the game is to get from point A to point B and score as many points as possible while doing so. So it's a very simple game. You only have one button and a joystick. So you move left and right, and your one button is to ac accelerate. Okay. So... You want to be, to me, the strategy is to go fast and go fast as often as you can. So you want to hold that button for as long as possible. Yeah, see the points are just like counting just from you psyched or uh, skiing. Yeah, right. so you go pretty fast. I mean, if you're going fast, you're going to score a lot more points if you're not holding the button. So you pretty much have to hold it as much as you can. Wow, and I completely forgot that there's like these like little bonus stages with like the jumps and stuff, huh? So are those significant? Yes, they are. So, so whenever you do the bonus stage, you want to hit the button as on time as possible, right as you're going off the ramp. Mm -hmm. And the better you are at timing this, the more points you get, and you get a maximum of four thousand points. Oh wow! Okay. So on this run in particular, I ended up, the first uh, bonus stage, I only got 3,500. And then the next one, I ended up getting 3,800. Okay. But the thing is, you want to be careful on that stage because if you time it too late, you're, you're pressing a button, you end up just falling off the ramp, basically, and you get zero points. Okay. Yeah. I see. And then it's just uh, the overhead stages and the bonus stages, and like, how, when does the loop end then? So the loop, each loop ends after that uh, bonus stage off the ramp. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Okay. That's a pretty quick loop. <laughs> Very quick. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Um... Why don't we uh, start the replay from the beginning here, and uh, we'll hear your commentary about uh, the run, and uh, we'll learn more about it okay. as we get as we do that. So uh, yeah, I'll start us from zero here, and it'll be uh, on go, and we'll all watch this video together. Okay, three, two, oh, oh, one, <laughs> go. Okay. Pretty, pretty good. Yeah, I'm good. I just caught it just in time. <laughs> All right. All righty, so the run is just beginning. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, so, so this is... Go ahead. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this is loop one, and I'm going to get through this without getting hit. It's going to go by pretty quickly. There's not a lot you have to worry about on loop one. I find that the AI here is not really that threatening. They don't get in your way as much. So I'm just kind of going through it really fast. I'm focusing on the smaller items for the most part. 
I'm not trying to grab the 1500 point or 1000 point items for the most part. I'm really focusing on those 100, 200, 300 point items. So there was a lot of, uh, you know, like little point items you didn't get, but you just opt for speed instead, or does it actually not end up getting you more score from uh, so, going out of your way? So sometimes, though, when you go, you have to slow down for some of those pickups anyway, and by the time you do that, you end up losing time. Okay. I'm playing for speed, because you'll score a decent amount of points anyway if you're just doing everything fast. You're going through it as fast as you can. So I'm trying to grab the easier items, typically. Though there is an exception to this. At the beginning of the downhill stage and some of the loops, that's the first stage, I will grab a 1,000 point item because it's very easy to grab. I position myself properly, but otherwise I try not to grab the ones in the middle of the stages. Alright, so here's the jump. You press the button right at the bottom of the middle mini map ramp. That's correct. That oh, is man. correct. Interesting. And I always watch the map. I don't watch the bottom of the screen when I do this. Mm, gotcha. So what? So that was a loop, huh? So like, what changes uh, per loop or anything? So actually, there's RNG on the stage layouts. Okay. So the RNG is pretty subtle, but it can affect the run. The thing that you have to keep in mind too, and you may have noticed this already, you, you can't see too far ahead of yourself. So you might see something that looks familiar from a, pr from a previous loop, but it might be in a different spot. And it's hard to see ahead of time where things are gonna be. Ah. Especially if you're going fast. Yeah, definitely. So, um, do you lose lives from crashing, or uh, do you, is it just all based off time, or do you lose time from crashing, or what's the deal with that? So, the only thing you lose from crashing is time. So, you lose okay. 10 seconds on the first couple uh, loops or so. But what happens is, after the t you go through a couple, two or three timers or so, they'll start counting the animation of you crashing into it. Oh, wow, okay. Oh, I see. Okay, now, yeah. I... See right there, a little bit of it got counted. Yeah. Interesting. So, yeah, so I think the reason the developers did this was I think they realized once you get a, quite a few timers in and they made the timers go faster, if they didn't do that, losing 10 seconds wouldn't mean as much on the later timers. Mm. Right, because you can get extra timers if you get like, what, 10,000 points or is it 12,000? It's 10,000 by default, and every 5,000 after that. Oh, okay. Wow. Alright, so this is going to be loop 3. Not a whole lot different from loop 2, by the way. Is there a significance in uh, going like to the left or the right of the red or blue flags? Are you supposed to do those in a certain way to get more points? Or what's it... There's the no flags. significance that I'm aware of. The thing is to really just not hit the flags because you lose 100 points for each flag you hit. Yeah. Mm. Now, fun fact about the flags, there is a negative points exploit that you can take advantage of in stage one. If you go very slow, you don't grab any items and you hit flags and then you crash every so often, you can go into negative points and you can end up getting a counter stop that way. Wow. Yeah, the score rolls over, and that allows you to get 999. 999. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty Yeah, good. I've never done it myself, but... <laughs> oh, I always thought the man, uh, crashing can... spray was pretty good. It looked very uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I'll tell y'all this, too, while I'm at it. The AI gets more annoying after the first loop. It's almost as if they're trying to button read you a little bit and trying to figure out where you're going to go. Wow. Wow. <laughs> That's interesting. 
Yeah, so there's, I find this, the uh, the one thing that's the worst is the skier, not the black one, but I think it's the aqua colored one. That one will try to zigzag. Mm. Yeah, it, when you see stuff like that, it reminds you of like an outrun when like the cars will just start randomly switching lanes in between the turn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just evil. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Honestly, I think the first loops are pretty manageable, the first few loops or so, but once you get to loop four or so, it starts to ramp up big time, difficulty-wise. Mm. Is it mostly oh. the enemies that come for you that's the difficult part, or is it the randomized courses? So it's a combination of both, but I do find as the loops go on that the AI does get more annoying. So I would say the AI first and then the layouts the close second. Another thing is that the layouts don't only change dramatically for stage one. For stage two, it's more subtle, the RNG in terms of layout. And stage three, which is the ramp, that one is the same no matter what. Mm. Yeah, are the snowmen your lives or... I think it's just um, after every loop, you get oh. like an additional snowman. <laughs> a loop snowman. What the heck? Yeah, it's kind of cute. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. Like like a funny Easter egg. Yeah. I think it would have been cool if you could run into the snowman. I have a few on the stage, but yeah. I don't want yeah. thinking about that, I guess. Yo, I mean, I think back in those days, Taito was um, basically making games in like three, four month cycles for like most of the 80s from interviews they've talked about, like Campsters Arcade Archive streams. Oh, wow. So part of that could have just been like, they're focusing more just getting a good solid gameplay mechanic out there and then trying to make it work as much within the time period, which later on they created issues with some of their later 80s games where it's like they're trying to be more ambitious, but just didn't have enough time or like technical know how to like pull it off. I could believe that. Is that you wiggling on the this part? Do you yeah, so the, you actually have. So you actually have to counter steer because what will happen <laughs> if you if you don't do that? You're going to go to either the left or the right, and you end up crashing into the trees. Mm. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> the mid-air tree crash. <laughs> so that crash, I do want to explain that one. So, mm -hmm. so I tr usually try to position myself to where I go right between the rocks, but I, did, I messed up the timing, and I just didn't get it down. Yeah, like the hard thing about the game is like when you press that go button, I guess you do go really fast, so it's not easy to. But you do crash at that point. There's one other thing. There's one other thing that makes it hard to turn as well, and it's the fact that there's a bit of a delay with the turning itself. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's like like you can, yeah, it's like it kind of slows down a little bit and then like kind of jerkily speeds up a bit, almost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Already the time's starting to count down somewhat fast. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, the time is really counting down fast. And they count down like faster when you crash. Oh, yeah, man, and the it's time. starting you notice it. <laughs> Wait, it, it went back up. Yeah, it's yeah, had the timer extend from like point increments. Wait, you can extend the time with the points? Yeah, it's like yep. every 10,000 and the 10,000 at first and every 5,000. Is that correct? Oh, oh, that's correct. Okay, so sweet. Now, in the game, it's a hidden mechanic, but on the American Arcade cabinet, you can actually see it written on the side, on the left side of the screen. Huh. Like the marquee? I did a little bit of research. Mm hmm. Okay. Pro tips from the cabinet itself. 
It's also on the flyer for the game as well that was that was sent out to uh, coin operators back in the day. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right, loop six. <laughs> And this is where the madness really begins. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> but I got the 1,000. <laughs> yeah, nice. It's like, what's that one guy? Like a jet ski guy? <laughs> Makes it, like, yeah, he's a snowmobile. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Watch out for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky on that one. <laughs> yeah, this guy's just coming so fast. Yeah, I did get lucky there. Oh, yeah, it's going to get worse. But I got through that stage at least. Yeah, one other thing I was going to ask too, like, because I noticed some people, like, when we were playing this for and past the Olympics tournament, they try to use the ice to get for some of the big point items, but then it seems like that just tra kind of traps you to the expectation of, like, I'll just get more points, but then the ice is slippery and easier to lose control and hit, like, a rock or tree. Yeah, so that's definitely true. I try to avoid trying to cross into them in particular. Because mm. I know I'm going to lose control, especially if I'm going fast. Okay. Oh my god, that timer, though. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Jesus. It's pretty funny how fast yeah, it's going. <laughs> yeah, they really want me off that machine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So since you have all the time extensions built up, that's why it's... Just re, re, uh, re, re going up that time. Yep. Okay. That's all the time extensions. Now I'm going to get a perfect score on this bonus here. I'm going to get the 4,000. Nice. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, this ain't going to last too long. Yeah. <laughs> what the? Not even seconds anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's like literally two seconds there. <laughs> what a rip off. <laughs> oh man. That's pretty funny. So I guess there's a certain, you know, they kind of cap you off at a certain point. Yeah, it does seem like, it seems like there's only so many loops you're going to be able to get into just because of the way the time counts down, even yeah, if you're was, getting yeah. extends. Yeah, that was ridiculous. Yeah, like, there are other tazas of this game out there which do reach, like, something like 320,000 points before game overing, but, yeah, it just kind of seems like it's basically, you could try playing perfectly, but you'll just get knocked off at some point, maybe, like, loop 9 or 10, if I had to guess. Yeah, that, that makes sense. I mean, honestly, I think I could get past loop 7, but I don't know how much further I can get than that. Mm. Well, yeah. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta press it as far as you can. So, you know, only oh, definitely. Minutes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would love to. I'm gonna come back to it on and off at some point, see if I can get a higher score. I want to at least get past loop seven. To be honest with y'all. Yeah. I think I can yeah. do it because the truth is. I had quite a few early deaths in that run. I mean, it crashes. Mm. And if I didn't have those, I would have had a little bit more time on the clock on the earlier timers. And what I got, it would have taken me a while before I would have gotten to like the third or fourth timer if that was the case. Right. Yeah, it makes me wonder because this poor, this has a poor on arcade archives as well for um, PS4, I think. So, mm -hmm. wonder how good the scores are on there since this has been out for like a few years at this point. Yeah, I don't know myself for sure because I don't have a PS4. I played it on MAME. Okay. It's also on the Switch as well. Hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah, that'd be interesting. <laughs> now, another thing, speaking of re-releases of, of this game, you can also play this game on Mr. FPGA nowadays. Oh, nice. Oh, just about all of the Taito SJ games have been ported over to Mister at this point. Okay. There's a core for that. Yeah. So what else is on that system? It's just like... There's Jungle Hunt, Elevator Action, Frontline. Okay. I can't remember the other games. Oh, isn't Time Tunnel on there? Yeah, I remember. I think it is. Yeah, I'm not. I haven't played that one to be honest. That's the one where you're like controlling like a locomotive and you're like picking up other cars and passengers and like dropping them off. I had to play that for a tournament a while back, and apparently that game has some really weird loop mechanics where like enemies just get incredibly fast and like almost impossible. You can get into spots where it's like impossible to dodge if you don't set things up correctly. Oh wow. <laughs> Also, a train game like that just seems like a very Japanese thing. Yeah, I think there was there's like a small period where it was like there's this boom of like um, puzzle train games, as people would call them, because Sega like super locomotive. Yeah, oh, yeah, I, I forgot about that. So, you know. But yeah. So yeah, a pretty short uh, episode here, pretty much, with the Alpine Ski, but, you know, it's great to see Alpine Ski, and, uh, you know, it basically was, like, the guilty pleasure game to me, but I see that it's actually not too hard to pick up, it seems, just, would hmm. you say you needed a bit of a route through the trees? <laughs> so, I, I route a little bit in the beginning. And there's some familiar patterns. I know, okay, I'm going to go to the left here. But as I said earlier, you don't always know where the pattern is going to emerge, but you can kind of, you know it when you see it, especially on the downhill stage. Do you like to use the flags to guide you or anything like that? or The flags, I don't really use them to guide me per se, but whenever I'm on the, the second stage of a loop, I try to get on the sides of the flags if I can't grab the items too well. Okay. Because what happens is if you hit the flags, you lose 100 points per flag you hit. Yeah, I could see that adding up if you hit them too much. Yeah, it adds up a little bit, but if you're going through fast, it's, it's going to be, I don't want to say too negligible, but it's not a major run killer, in other words. Hmm. Okay. Keep that in mind. Now, you know what's funny? If you watch World of Long Plays play this game, good old Slouchy, all he's doing is just trying to go through everything super clean. He he ends up with not a lot of points to run. He only ends up with like 70,000, something like that. Yeah, that's... <laughs> sounds pretty typical for the stuff he does. He's just like... Gotta get a new long play out every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like fast food at that point. Oh, not even a day. Like it looks like they get like multiple new long plays out <laughs> every single day. Uh, <laughs> Classic. Yeah, I know people know that issue in like other games they've covered for like especially shmups where they just don't get into scoring at all and just try to like brute force like just dodging like crazy for levels. Especially like the Dragon Blaze um long play they did. <laughs> oh, that's an infamous one. <laughs> infamous, yeah. The way he does that two six mid boss. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, or anytime they gotta play a cave game. Yeah. The uh, the wiggling and whatnot. You know, that wiggling on uh, the bonus stage kind of reminded me of that. Maybe, maybe I should get that wiggling checked out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> trying to 
cheat on the bonus level. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah. Any uh, final words on Alpine Ski? I don't know. Like, if you guys have stuff to talk about, but <laughs> it's like uh, that's pretty much it. That's, yeah, that's pretty much it for me. Like, if you like the thrill of playing skiing in your own home, play Alpine Ski. <laughs> yeah, is that what the flyer said? I was going to ask about the flyer. Oh yeah. And then, now the back of the flyer says, uh, now players can grasp the challenge of the slope, the thrill of intense competition year round with yeah. alpine ski, apparently. Right. Like, Ma making a great outdoor sport, a great indoor sport. <laughs> <laughs> that, is that also one of the lines? It's on the front of the flyer. It's pretty bad. The pretty US cheesy. flyer. Yeah. Pretty cheesy. Yeah, that's that's typical of like all those US flyers with like some cheesy chick and like ski get up and then some blind on the back about like and you'll make a lot of money from this. Yeah, those are some tough times in the arcades. I mean eighty one, geez. Those are like it's like like it's like the the dawn of gaming, you know. Well, yeah, it's more like basically after Space Invaders and Pac-Man came out, it was like anybody's game and everybody's just like... It's like, okay, what do we do now? Yeah, pretty much. Like, I don't think it starts really getting more consolidated until like the mid 80s onwards. Because yeah, a lot of these yeah. really small firms just like kind of drop off and stuff like that. I do appreciate that. It's just like you just have like the games, yeah. As far as Alpine Ski, just it's just the game concept is so simple, and then the execution is also simple. But like as long as it's like got its fun factor, you know, it probably did its job in the arcade. Yeah. Especially like this is like 1981 levels of fun, so gotta like lower your standards a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this ain't Alpine. No yeah, come on. <laughs> Well, I got it, it, it is fast at all time ski, I have to say. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the only other game I think I played from them in this, uh, released in that year was like, what, Frog and Spiders, which it's okay. not as exciting as Alpine Ski. Yeah. But yeah, thanks, uh, Simage, for coming on. I uh, appreciate you talking about Alpine Ski. This was cool to check out. No problem. Yeah. I suppose that'll uh, do it for Maximo and I uh, hosting this episode. But just a quick one, guys. So enjoy some alpine ski uh, in your near future, I suppose. All right. So yeah, until next time, everybody. Yep. See you next game. Bye. <laughs>